What's up, everyone, and welcome back to HBCU Game Day. We are back in our Atlanta studios, and it is August, y'all. It's almost time for fall. Fall camp has began. That means football season and SIAC football is literally right around the corner. So we have to get into all of the storylines that you need to know before the season officially kicks off later this month. I am Simone Stanley, joined by Sly, the sports guy, Williams, and also Jamie Walker, two voices that you were here on numerous SIAC football games this season. Guys, I know y'all itching to get back to football. How y'all feeling? Outstanding. Um, listen, it, I, there's no tinge of fall in the air yet as far as in Atlanta, Atlanta is concerned. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, I'm ready to get back on the field. You know, this is the best time of the year right here, man. It's football, it's football time, man. You know, kids out there sweating, camp started. Hey, everybody's ready to go, man. It's all the anticipation. Right now, everybody's in first place. <laughs> it's the best, except more. Still have hope. <laughs> <laughs> except more. Oh, is it too early. Did I, did you I started already. I did it. My bad. I, I apologize, Maroon Tigers. Off the top, I, they done clicked off the video. They already coming at us in the comments. I apologize, yeah. Maroon Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, Maroon Tigers fans. We have a lot of positive things to discuss when it comes to your football team um, in this show. But let's go ahead and start off with the biggest storyline. There are four new head coaches in the SIAC this season, and one of the biggest storylines is coming out of Clark Atlanta University. Head coach Teddy Keaton coming from Allen University where he turned that program around, taking his head coaching talents to Clark Atlanta and taking most of his roster <laughs> from Allen University, including the 2023 SIAC Player of the Year quarterback, David Wright. I don't know, man. Allen, they might have to check the locker room. Check. I don't know if he took the benches, if he you know took the mean? pads, took the equipment. He might have took everything. Bring it to Clark, man. He took a lot, man. <laughs> Listen, it, it, when it comes to just that roster, if you look up and down and compare it to last season, you're going to just see a whole lot of familiar names. Um, that team in itself, man, is just loaded with talent. I think Clark Atlanta was always a, a hidden gem when it yes. comes to the city of Atlanta when it comes to just the recruiting hotbed. There's a couple of universities in this town that that are, you're seeing kind of benefit. One on the, on the FBS level, but one definitely on the Division II level, and that's Clark Atlanta University. When you're talking about a, a name that has, it, it, you, is synonymous with turning programs around, uh, you're talking about Teddy Keaton coming to another program, trying to do the same thing, and having some of the similar, or well, not similar resources. If you ask him, you know, Different resources than he's had in the past, but definitely on the right foot so far. The social media buzz is absolutely killing it right now. Because when you're talking about what the field's going to look like, go on social media and, and, and check that out. But along with that, the players that have come in and really given this team buy-in, along with the city doing it, doing it as well, you can really see that they are, you know, are killing it down there um, at, at CAU Panther Field. That, that's a big thing, man. You talked about being a sleeping giant. We we talked about this all the time off air. How, what type of program Clark Atlanta could be if they had the right leadership in there and they had not only the right coach, you also have to have the backing from up high. You know, college football, it only works as well as your administrators and your support staff helps it to work. And so now when you have both of those working on the same page and you're in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia. You're in the, you know, you, you're right here in the center. Georgia is, the, is a hotbed football state. You know, maybe California, Texas, and Florida, they're all right there on the same level as Georgia when it comes to these high school recruits and the high school talent that's coming out of the state. So now, if you have somebody who knows how to build programs, did it at Stillman, did it at Allen. He made those two programs into winners. So now, you put him in a city like Atlanta with the resources that Clark has, Clark could be a sleeper. Clark, you know, Clark, it, it, he, it's one of those teams you're going to have to watch out for this year. They're going to sneak up and they're going to beat somebody, and you never know. They might, if they don't end up in, in the championship game, who's to say they don't end up in the uh, the Florida Bowl? Ooh. Ooh. Look at you calling it early, Bowl. sir. Calling it early. But, but Teddy Keaton – calls himself the perennial turnaround person. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't mind going and, and, you know, taking something from the from the bare minimum and building it up in his image. He's an offensive guy. He's talked about the ways that 
he wants to get more involved in the defense. He's brought some coaches with him with experience in LC Cole coming Cole. in and running that defense and showing these kids. He went viral <laughs> this summer um, in, 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 you know, some things he said. So turning that culture completely around is what they're doing so far. And I'm loving what I'm seeing. You know, we, we thought we would get some of that with Coach Willie Slater. It didn't come, you know, to pass. But I think with this new group, this fresh group of coaches coming into Clark Atlanta, I think you'll see changes. And you talk about that social media buzz that Clark Atlanta University has. I love the little behind the scenes videos that we're getting of Coach mm -hmm. Keaton talking with the staff, talking with the team. It's giving a real hard knock style. It really you, is. You, you know, this is something that a lot of these old fossils, some of these old dinosaurs. <laughs> Why do you always have to come for somebody? Well, they, they got to get it out their system. It's, <laughs> it's, it's 2024. Now you kids spend more time on that cell phone than they do talking to anybody. Tell it. They spend more time on TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, whatever, than anybody. So if you want to get these kids, you want to get the interest in your program, you have to be online. You have to be on social media. So when you find a coach that embraces social media, watch how that program takes off. And a lot of these coaches have to get out. Because you know, we've been we've been calling games for a long time, man. And we're used to dealing with coaches who give you that coach's speak that, oh, I'm taking one day at a time. I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to do it. I'm just here to talk about football. But you have to, now with today's kid, you have to be a different person. You got to be you got to be a different go getter when it comes to that internet. And I'm when I look at Clark Atlanta, I'm looking at how they're embracing social media. I'm like, see how they turn this thing around. See what type of kids they're going to end up pulling into Clark. So we talked about Allen University getting gutted, getting transferred to Clark Atlanta University. Clark Atlanta University, the red and black Allen University <laughs> oh. basically. <laughs> <laughs> now, another team that got gutted this offseason, Benedict College, the back-to-back -back yes. SIAC champion. These last couple of years, it's been Benedict or bust. Benedict and who else? Who has the best chance at beating Benedict? Now the runway is wide open in the SIAC now that Coach Tennis Berry is gone, and that team has been gutted. Yeah, Coach Dickerson, he has, he has a tough path. He has a tough path. Um, he lost a lot of great players. Now he does have uh, Aaron Miller coming back, Miller's defensive lineman. He's coming back, and he was one of those standouts on that defensive front for uh, for Benedict. That's about it. <laughs> that's, that's about it. That's all. You know, um, he has a lot. He has a lot. He has to do. And and the thing about having a new coach, sometimes if you bring in a new coach, you're bringing in a completely different philosophy. So the kids have to learn the new philosophy. They have to learn. Um, coaches have to learn who these kids are that they have in there. And I don't think Benedict even had a, a spring game. They, they had like a, a spring practice or something like that because they just didn't quite have the numbers, I don't think. So Coach Dickerson's a good coach now. He's a winning coach, coach down there in Florida. He knows about winning. So now he's going to have to put that to the test. And I want to caution those Benedict fans. Now, you got used to living high on the hog for two years. You got used to living good. It may have to take a trip back down to old Benedict times for a season. But I like Coach Dickerson. I like what he'll bring to the table. I don't think he'll be down there long. But they got him uh, preseason. I think they were rated fifth. They were ranked fifth in the coaches' poll for the preseason. I don't see that. <laughs> Not this year. So you're telling me the Benedict and Allen game is going to be competitive this year is what you're saying? It's, it's going to be competitive. We might just be waiting for somebody to score. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, one of the indicators that that um, that they're in the rebuilding phase was just Coach Dickerson's uh, response to questions about specifics. To be honest with you, because his hire was slightly late, yeah, um, and I don't think he was able to do everything he wanted to do in relation to um, recruiting. And again, you know, Chenisberry up to South Carolina State in Orangeburg now has taken several players as well. Um, you know, the likes of DeAndre Duhart, no longer there um, at Benedict. Um, the likes of um, Noel, I mean, uh, Scotland. You know, I'm not sure if he's there as well. And once these rosters settle, you're going to see just how much um, of the players are not part of that program anymore. Now, when you're talking about Aaron Miller, 
you know, coming off that defensive edge, that's a nice piece to have. But when you're talking about who's going to be the signal caller, who's going to run the football, how many linemen are left, you're talking about a team that has so much uncertainty that you really can't, you know, dictate where they're going to be in the standings. So uh, Coach Dickinson wanting to build culture. Um, I think he won the press conference. I think he is a Benedict guy in that um, they preach building men, building culture. But as far as building that football team, I don't know where they are now. And so with that uncertainty, we'll just have to wait and see. Fifth, I think, is really high right now as far as how they pick, considering who they lost. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, we're going to wait and see. Now we have two more coaches, two more new coaches in the SIC. Coach Pearl taking over at Allen University and Coach Mathis taking over at Morehouse Fly. Go ahead and start with <laughs> Coach Mathis at Morehouse. Since you had Morehouse on the brain when we started the show. Look here. I, I, love, <laughs> I love Morehouse. I love everything Morehouse stands for as an institution, as a school. Uh, great. They take young men, mold young men, and make them into great leaders of the future. Morehouse is going to go 0-10 again this year. <laughs> I mean, other than, Morehouse is a great place, but football-wise, they don't have it. Um, they had a lot of freshmen last year that they red-shirted, that they kind of set to the side, and they were kind of expecting those freshmen to make a contribution this year. But coach is gone. It took them, I don't know, five, six months to hire another coach, to hire Coach Mathis, and to bring Coach Mathis in, and he's already kind of behind, behind the eight ball because here's something with Morehouse. You have to recruit a different type of athlete to go to Morehouse. Let's just be honest. You know, you, you, can't, you can't get Bubba out the cornfield, you know, who can barely spell his name. He ain't going to Morehouse. He, 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 ain't going, he can't make it to Morehouse. You got to be an exceptional, expe, exceptional young man to make it into Morehouse. And then you also have to be a great football player, too, if you want to make that team any better. And right now, they just don't have the talent. They don't have the talent. It's a. They have Morehouse ranked 13 in the preseason rankings, the uh, the SIAC preseason 13. I think that's being generous. If they played Spellman, I might give Spellman three. I, I might give them three. <laughs> the disrespect. That's, Let me find uh, the right button for you. Oh man, that's. I I know I might not be allowed on campus anymore. I might not be allowed on campus, but I do. But, but my thing is, I think with Morehouse, they need some consistency in the culture. I think Coach Mathis is the guy to get that program where it needs to be because he's, he's an Atlanta guy. You know, he's well, the Cab County guy, Atlanta. He's the Cab County guy, hometown guy coming back. <laughs> he's, he's coming back, and he's an NFL guy. So when you're talking to a 17-year-old, 18-year-old guy, 18-year-old kid, and you say, hey, man, I played in the league. I know what it takes to get to the league. Those kids will listen. So they're going to listen to Coach Baptist because he has the pedigree. He's been there. But I'm just saying this year, it's going to be a tough one for him. Zero wins, those slides. Come Zero. on, guys, any given Saturday. We're Zero talking, wins. We would be the, more, the better conversation would be how many times they scored, much less how many times they win. That's the better conversation. It's going to be a tough year for Morehouse this year. Now, can they correct it? Can they get back on, on track and get the, get the ship flowing right? I think they can. But this year, it's going to be tough for Morehouse. I'm going to give them at least one win. Who? No, I'm, 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 with Sly, I'm with Sly on this one. I can't pick one on the schedule. Who they going to be? If you pull up that schedule, they got a couple of D1 folks. They got, or FCA, well, same thing. But. You're talking about team, a team that um, wasn't – you saw talented pieces. Um, Miles Scott on there last year playing quarterback as a freshman coming out of DMV was talented. But he won't be playing that position there this year. When you're talking about um, just what this team was, they lost the few pieces that they had. You hired someone so late that basically the recruiting season was over mm -hmm. and you got pieces that you could get in. Now, I'm not going to go as far as Sly, mm -hmm. but what I will tell you is the biggest thing they can contribute 
is just consistency and building that program again brick by brick. Um, I don't think they thought they would miss Rich Freeman this much. But over the last couple of years, that program has not looked, even under, uh, under Coach Freeman's last year, um, you could see that, that, you know, they were, you know, descending. And so now under the last two coaches, Coach Gerard Wiltshire last year, who wanted to do some things, wasn't able to steer the course, and he was an alum. You bring in Terrence Mathis, who's beloved in the city, um, you know, ex-Atlanta Falcon, but will always be an Atlanta Falcon, um, knows the culture of the city. Maybe that can bring some buzz to the actual team. But right now, Sly's right. It does take a special kind of person to, you know, be a Morehouse man and be on that football team because, quite frankly, you don't have what other schools have. I remember Coach Wiltshire talking last year about building a, a culture, but not just that, building men. And I'm talking about mountain movers that can actually do things. That has to be taken care of, and those resources have to be pulled around so that they can build a good football program. And so until that happens, Morehouse is going to be where they are. I just pulled up the schedule. Let me make this quick. I just pulled up the schedule. Start off Edward Waters. They're not beating Edward Waters. They're not beating them. John C. Smith made it to the Florida Bowl. They're not beating John C. Howard, they're not beating Howard. Next, Kentucky State. Kentucky State, what, what, what they have going in Kentucky State, his second year there with that air raid offense, Kentucky State's going to shock a lot of people. I think we, we, me and Simone were part of that game last year. Mm -hmm. Kentucky State, listen, David Curry and the, and the crew, listen, yeah. Coach Huggins, phenomenal job. They are, they are ascending. Yes. Absolutely. Kentucky State, they're going to be special. They're not beating Kentucky State. Then they play Benedict. Got a chance against Benedict, but Benedict still – has better talent than they have. Tuskegee, they're not beating Tuskegee. They're not, they play Albany State. They're not scoring against Albany State. <laughs> they play Fort Valley. They're not going to score against Fort Valley. <laughs> they play Miles. They're not going to score against Miles. And then they end the year with Clark. Keaton's going to make a point that last game of the year against Morehouse because now that last game of the year, Clark's going to be playing for a chance to either make it to the championship or – Make it to the Florida Bowl. So they might put up 50 on them. All right. You it's know what? Um, to all the Morehouse fans in the comments, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Thank you for sticking through that. Um, I still have y'all winning a game, you know? And make sure y'all come back. At Slide the Sports Guy on Twitter. Use that as motivation to get y'all a win this season. But we we right. talked enough about Morehouse. We 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 dumped and piled on Morehouse enough. Be the last, <laughs> last time all season we talked about. Oh, oh man. Dang, you got beef with somebody from Morehouse. I, I don't have beef with Morehouse. I actually like Morehouse. I'm not going to lie. I, well, I, I like... hate to hear you talk about somebody you don't like. <laughs> oh, man. Why is that? <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about some heavy hitters in the SIAC. I'm going to give you all a tall task because I know you all like to not put your foot down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know y'all y'all don't like to stand on business. So give me one team, one team, only one team can take the crown in the SIAC. Who is it? Fort Valley. Yeah, Albany. Okay, Fort Valley. Yes. That might be the game of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I think you you may see a repeat of they're in, because of course, the rivals play at the end of the game. Depending on how the record shape, you could see that game again in the SIAC championship. Yes. yes. Because I think both of those teams, Albany State getting into the championship game last year, wasn't a fluke. I think they improved as Coach Quinn Gray got what he wanted. You got to understand, it, it, it was similar to Kentucky State in that they completely changed who they are uh, philosophically, especially offensively. You know, Kentucky State was a was an option team, went to more of a spread set. Same thing with Albany State. Went to a down from a downhill running team with Coach Gabe Gardenia to a team that, you know, wants to throw the ball. If you know Quinn Gray at all from his roots, both from, from the Jacksonville Jaguars and from FAMU, he liked, you know, if he gets a quarterback that can chuck that thing around, he'll do it. Fort Valley, downhill running team with Brandon Marshall coming back. Um, defense led by Malik Harp and others. Man, look. They got everything ready and loaded to win this thing. But 
Uh-oh. They just got to get over the hump. They got to get out of their own way. Yes. Last year, they lost to Tuskegee in the, um, uh, in the uh, Red Tails Classic. And you saw what kind of pieces they had then. It's just a matter of them having luck go on their side to win the entire thing. And I think they are fully capable of doing it. Ooh, yeah. I, like that. I, I do like I do like that Fort Valley pick because, you know, if you think about it, that Thursday night game against Benedict, if Durham wasn't hurt, I think it would have been a – I still think Benedict was the better team, but I, I think they would have threw up a little bit more fight if, if Durham wasn't hurt. But I do like what, what Coach Gray is doing at Albany State. I think, I think the Albany State, I think they're ready. I think as a complete team, they brought back more people. And see, in today's game, you're losing so many kids from transfer. You're bringing in so many new transfers. So I think the coach that does the best job of keeping his team together, I think that coach, I, I kind of elevate them a little bit. I kind of elevate them a little bit. because, and, and Ray's a great coach. He's, he's a great coach. So I, I really think Albany State, this is the year they bring back, what was it, Dirty Blue or whatever? They mm-hmm. bring back that, that strong defense of, of back in the day. They'll bring that back, and I, I really think this will be the year that Albany State will kind of get over that hump, and they'll go ahead and they'll. they'll I think they'll they'll win that. Um, they'll they'll easily win the conference. I think so. I, I think I think Albany State. And now here here's something else I want to I want to tell to everybody out there. Tell the people we're saying this a couple of weeks before the season starts, and we don't truly know who's going to be on these rosters because you have a lot of turnover. Benedict last year brought in their quarterback, brought in our Williams right at the start of camp. You know, so we don't know who's coming in. You also are going to have some kids who, who may be academically ineligible those first couple of weeks of the season until they try to set up everything with the, um, I don't know, the portal or whatever they call it. They try to set up all their grades right. So a lot of times it can get kind of tricky with these preseason picks. But – Mm. I do. Hey, hey, it I'm sounds like on. he trying to make a case for Is himself it? if he wrong. I, I, I'm going to stand on it. I, I said all It sounds like you backtracking. It sounds like he backtracking. I said it sounds like you said Fort Valley that he shook with, with his pick. I said Albany. I'm going to stand with it. Okay. You I'm, said Albany, then you said a whole bunch of reasons why you might be well, wrong. I mean, hey. <laughs> some people wrong. <laughs> I can't be I can't be good looking and smart. Uh-uh. You know, son, son got to give. <laughs> but to say they're the definitive pick, though. He said, I, period. He, 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 he uh, did. Well, you know. Hey. And he said, easily. Easily. If, 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 if it goes the way it should, and if, if it goes the way it should, I, I do think they're head and tails above, above everybody. I do think so with, with the talent that I see. That I see. But who knows who's going to decide a week before camp that, hey, I got a D1 offer, so I'm leaving. You know, so that's the that's the tricky part about today's mm. football. It really today's is today's football. That's the tricky part. But but I'm I said it. I admit it. Okay. Okay. Staying on business. He I started standing. this segment by saying staying on business. He is jumping on business. And you was not. You was wobbling <laughs> on business. I'm on it. Standing <laughs> tall. Well, I like it. We got a lot of definitive takes. We have Morehouse not winning the game. Not so we'll game. go back to that later. We have Fort Valley. We have Albany. I like, you know, I like the, the the picks that we have so far. Now let's talk about a sleeper team. And mm. no, Clark Atlanta is not a sleeper team. We've been ta- everybody has been talking about Clark Atlanta this offseason. You cannot be the most talked about team and also be a sleeper team. That Sly. hurt. That hurt. So you can't pick Clark Atlanta as a sleeper team. Everybody's awake. Everybody is woke and Ooh, like we know. Ooh. So watch I out like for Clark. it. I like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw somebody out there. I'm gonna throw somebody out there. I'm gonna go down the loneliest highway in the world, I-16. I, I know th- exactly where the you're loneliest going. highway ever, I-16. And I'm gonna say those Tigers from Savannah State. I think the Tigers from Savannah State. They have played uh, these past couple of years. They played a lot of teams close. They've snuck away a few wins here and there, and they had a couple that slipped away that shouldn't have slipped away. But the common theme, and their defense has always been pretty strong. They've always had a strong defense. But the common problem with Savannah State these past couple of years, they had three quarterbacks. Anytime you have three quarterbacks, you don't have one quarterback. Now, Jaden Adams 
I think it's his junior year on, on paper on the field. It should be his junior year. I'm not sure. Maybe red shirt sophomore. I'm not sure how they, how they work all of that out. But if this young man steps up and becomes the quarterback that they think that he is, if he steps up and becomes the quarterback that he should be, Savannah State will shock a lot of people this year. They, they, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, let's bring up where they had them ranked. They, uh, the preseason poll had them uh, Savannah State ranked eighth, and I think that's an injustice. I don't think they're the, they're the eighth best team in the conference. I think they're around four, five at worst. Five at the worst is Savannah State. But it all depends on the quarterback. It all depends on Jaden Adams. If Jaden Adams can be an efficient passer, if he can be an efficient passer, it, something special is going to happen in Savannah. That's my statement. Good call. Good call. That's because statement. I agree with you. Uh, Coach Ann Kelton, you know, you saw him um, be able to do some things in his first year. You saw some talent. Um, in that second year, he admit, he, he, you know, they took a step back. Um, probably didn't, you know, do what they were supposed to. But I'm going to go south. Mm. I'm going to go with those other types. Oh, okay. Those Edward Waters types. Okay. Now, down there in Duval, they ball. They ball. They ball in Duval. They do. Um, they'll tell you that. Tori Arnold Morgan and, and company absolutely does that. Shot a lot of people last year, and now that them and Allen are finally in the mix, mm -hmm. that they are full-fledged members of the SIAC, they're ready to take reins of, the, of this conference. Um, I think you got the likes of Johnny Jones at the wide receiver position. Yes. The only question, that wide receiver core was phenomenal last year. But I think the only question is who pulls the trigger for them. Yes. Um, I think defensively they fly around the football like anyone else. When you talk about Florida speed, recruiting that base, um, that North Florida and South Florida um, area, they have always had athletes. It has just been a matter of, you know, them not being, you know, just full members and also losing games in, 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 top, in opportune times. Now, I got to, you know, two more horn for a second. Called the most phenomenal game last year in their victory over Tuskegee, where Jaron Russell absolutely thro throws the hail mary and they win the football game, and it was it was a phenomenal sight to see. But I think if they can get consistency from the running game, along with continuing to play defense, I think they'll be just fine. Um, so they are my sleeper pick. I'm not I'm not necessarily in the camp of saying they'll win it all. But I've always admired the type of athletes they've had, and if they can get that together, they will be a sleeper team. They'll be they'll be right up there. I think, in the same mold as what Sly talks about when it comes to Savannah State, because I think people don't give enough credit to Savannah State when they first, you know, moved out or moved back into the conference from being Division One. They had athletes, and you could see what was going on based on who they recruited for. Now, you know, they've kind of taken a step back, changed coaches, things of that nature, and you kind of see them you know, what they're doing now. Edward Waters, it's the same thing. Moving up from NAIA to now Division II, what they're able to do, I think, is now put those pieces together with the right coach at the right time and the right administration back into. You cannot give that enough credit to having people in their corner that want athletics to succeed. I think they're ready to take that next step up. Like it. You know, and something else about Edward Waters, what I like about Edward Waters but I do like I like Garcon as, as a linebacker. You talk about flying to the ball, linebacker, you know, sideline to sideline guy. But I like their stadium. It's a small stadium. It's a small stadium, not a big stadium. But the way when we as broadcasters, we as broadcasters, when you set up the stadium, usually I'm, I'm giving a little bit of behind-the-scenes talk for the people at home. Usually when you set the cameras up, the cameras are usually on the, the home side. And so the cameras are looking out on, on the field, and you see the away side of the stadium for most stadiums. And usually the away side, it, it doesn't travel like that. So you're not going to have a full stadium on the away side. Right. But the way Edward Waters is set up, the cameras are showing the home side of the field. And Edward Waters, the past couple of games that I've done at Edward Waters, they've always had good support. Mm -hmm. They've had good support. So the stadium looks full. You know, it. That home side, they have a bunch of people. It's a lot of support. So it's a good place to call a game, and unless you've got a 1 o'clock game in that Florida, that Florida heat. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I'm else. still waiting to call a game down there, but yes, <laughs> yes, it looks hot. It does. And the field. The field itself just pops out. So. It, yeah, it does. Yeah. It is, I, and I think, I think they're doing a lot, and you talked a lot about how, you know, your administration, if you have the backing behind it, and I'm 
I'm so, I forget the president's name. It's going to kick my butt. I cannot think of the president's name. But he supports the athletics. He supports the athletics. When you have someone on high who supports the athletics like that, and then the athletic director, she's great. You know, so you have when you have that support, man, I, I do. I like Edward Waters. I like their chances. So that, that Edward Waters-Savannah State game might be, <laughs> might be that battle of I-95. Oh, yeah. So that's two sleeper teams to watch out for. You know, we talk a lot about the favorites. We talk a lot about Clark and Albany. But keep your eyes out on... Savannah State, and keep your eyes out on Edward Waters for them to make some noise in SIAC this season. Now, we talked a lot about storylines, but we got to take it on the field and in the trenches. So the schedule is out for the 2024 season. Let me know what game you are anticipating the most. If you could send somebody and let somebody know you have to be at this game, what do you think it's going to be? I, I spoke about it last year uh, when it came to that game. Uh, and it was a phenomenal setting in Tuskegee. But they go to Edward Waters this year. So I'm looking forward to fifth game, fifth week of the season. Um, Tuskegee traveling to Edward Waters. We have not talked much about Tuskegee at all, but they bring back a great team as well. Um, they lost some pieces. I, you know, the, the, yes, it got – and, and you know, Coach Aaron James talked about, you know, quarterback Robertson last year. You know, he, he did a phenomenal job. But he said they got some people in the mix. He said, watch out. Um, you know, and the, and the likes of Antonio Meeks no longer being there as well, you know, kind of hurts you. But I still think they have enough. They go up to Jacksonville, and I want to see what that game will be. That's, that's going to be an exciting affair because I think Tuskegee wants to take, take – you know, they want some get back. And I think they'll be looking for it up there in Duval. I, I think that's a 7 o'clock game, night game. So I know the stadium's gonna be jam packed, and um, also, you know, Tuskegee—they're gonna bring—they're gonna bring a bus or two down there, so they're gonna bring some fans down there. So, what do you think, Sly? What game do you have circled? I think we're gonna start the season off strong. Week zero, I mean, August thirty-first, Clark Atlanta at Fort Valley. I think a lot of my questions gonna be answered. Week zero, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because I need to know what type of team Coach Keaton has. I need to know what type of team uh, Allen West is going to yes. be this year. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what type of team they are. And you go to Fort Valley, and Fort Valley's favorite to win the conference. So you got those two teams playing to start the year off. That's going to be a bond burner. That is, and then here's the thing. And, and, and what I like, I like the mind. I like, I like the mind you have coaching. Uh, you have Coach L.C. Cole. You've given this man the whole summer to sit up here and draw a game plan for Fort Valley. You give him a whole summer to draw a game plan for one team, I like my chances. <laughs> I like my chances with it. But Fort Valley has the talent over Clark. They do. They have the talent. They've been there before. They, The, the kids at Clark ha haven't won anything. They haven't, they haven't won anything. Clark hadn't won. Clark won one game last year. What, maybe two the year before? I'm not quite sure. But so they aren't used to winning. Fort Valley, they've been here. They know it's another big game for them. So I think we start the year off fast, quick, fast, in a hurry right there. First game of the year. I love it. The schedule makers did their thing. They did their thing with that one. But it's going to be a lot of great games this season. Like I said, y'all can hear – these two voices on numerous SIAC games this season, calling the games. You're doing color? Doing color. I should. Hopefully, I might do a little play-by-play. Play. Okay, I'll do color. a little bit of it all. A little play-by-play, a play, yep. little, little bit of it all. Jamie, you're doing play-by-play. Play. I'm doing both as well. Oh, okay. excuse me. Yeah, doing both as well. Personal two-way players. We, we got, got, we got to be multi-talented. Absolutely. <laughs> but y'all know where to find me all the time, HBCU game day. And, of course, I'll be on some games this season, too. But y'all, I know y'all do a lot of things across the SIC and the HBCU landscape, so go ahead, let the people know, Jamie, where they can find you, what they can expect from you this football season. You will find me on whatever network wants to have me. Nah, let me stop. Oh, I thought, you, uh, I thought that was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll find me on whatever um, SIC game uh, is there um, on ESPN+. Plus. Um, you can find me on Twitter, at SportVoiceJW. Okay, so you really threw me off because I was like, what's this new network? <laughs> <laughs> Sly, you all over the place. You can find me whoever's paying. Whoever's paying, <laughs> I'm there, man. I'm going to be, uh, you know, of course, SIAC, SIAC games 
on um on ESPN. Uh, I'll be doing a few um, uh, CIAA games. I'll do a few of those on the CIAA network. Um, I'll be all over. I think I have a flow sports game this year. I'm hey, hopefully I'm working. Hopefully, hopefully. So it sounds like a lot of people pay. Hopefully, I'm. Uh, exactly. I don't know. Call me. Look, I, I got some room. Call me. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm still available. I still got a couple. I got a couple of weeks out there if, if you want. If you want to hit me up. But uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be all over HBCU football. It's Division One and Division Two. Um, so with HBCU League Pass Plus, I'll, I'll get the vote on their their Player of the Year. Okay. So so we'll be seeing a lot of um. Division one HBCU football. I'm gonna be working. I'm, I'm gonna be working, so hopefully I can get paid. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, guys, this has been great. We are gearing up for another. Oh, at Slider Sports Guy. At Slider Sports Guy. Hit me up. I'll talk back to you. I, and you're gonna I, be talking a lot of trash. I, I answer questions. I take all of them. I take at Sly the Sports Guy. More house fan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead and bomb him <laughs> in his Twitter mentions. I'll be, matter of fact, I'll see Morehouse against uh, Port Valley, I think. No, no, He's Tuskegee. Morehouse and Tuskegee. I'll be there in Columbus with you. Make right. sure you're keeping it neutral. Man. Oh, I keep it neutral. I, I, I play right down the line. Only people I care about is South Carolina game cost women basketball. That's the only time I'm not <laughs> neutral. That's the only time I'm not neutral. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, they can get it whenever. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This is your 2024 SIAC football preview on HBCU Game Day. I am Simone Stanley from our Atlanta studios. Until next time.